Welcome back, my dear light bulbs, to another Jujutsu Kaisen discussion. It has been a while since I talked about this series in on my channel. And it's not because I do not enjoy the series, because I literally was like 20-something chapters behind once again. Normally that happens when I read uh, multiple mangas, at, or manga, it's not mangas, it's manga at the same time. And Jujutsu Kaisen, you know, no matter how good it is, it happens to all the series I read, nevertheless, unless I review a weekly or whatever. But... I just have to say, the mangaka of this series is such a great mangaka. Why? Because with the um, Ghetto stuff, with the flashback with Ghetto and Gojo, it was just so good. We know Ghetto's ideals, how it shaped him, how he, you know, he was a shaman before and all that stuff. He used to help everybody else. His best friend was Gojo. They used to go on missions together. Then they were protecting the vessel, which I'm not going to lie to you, the protection of the vessel and things like that. I was like... Uh, that's super messed up because the found not the founder but i think he's like one of the strongest shamans right his name was tengen he was they were basically like protecting the vessel and this vessel is a girl that basically was going to get sacrificed there was going to be a merger or whatever and when the merge happens that girl her memories everything will be gone and she will become tengen because they want tengen to live um forever basically um now there was this terrorist organization that's like no tengen you know he must die that's it you, you can't have him be like immortal so they send out megumi's dad and megumi's dad is a legend like this dude destroyed gojo he had no curse energy he had um hatred for the shamans because Basically, he was part of the Sending Clan, which is a prestige clan. But the thing with Finn, since he has no curse power, the Sending Clan basically discarded him like, you're useless. And Go Gojo actually said in one chapter, he said to Meg uh, Megumi, the young Megumi, he was like, you know, your father is part of the Sending Clan. That makes you part of the Sending Clan. You are his trump card. And Megumi obviously has curse energy, curse powers, and things like that, while his father didn't. So the Sending Clan obviously will favor Megumi over his father. So his father was heard about that, and he was just like, screw you guys, and he became like a mercenary, went on this mission, actually killed the vessel that Tengen was going to get merged with, but and then we find out later on, oh, it didn't matter, another vessel has been found or born, whatever, and Tengen can use that vessel, so the life of that girl was basically meaningless, which is really sad to see, and obviously there's dark moments introduced with Kaizen, because Kaizen is not like a lighthearted shonen, like there's really serious moments, and that was uh, one of the serious moments, especially since they went to Okinawa, Okinawa, they went to the beach, they were having fun, um, she was in music class with her peers and stuff like that, she was spending a good time, because, you know, she... She knew that her life was basically going to come to a close and she was not going to be the same anymore and she was going to be Tengen. And not only that, Gojo told her, hey, Gojo and Geto told her, hey, if you decide that, hey, I don't want to do this merge thing, uh, we will not let it happen, which is really nice of them. And they even said, Gojo said, hey, even if we get on Tengen's bad side, we'll fight him. So that was really awesome because Tengen is like a god, uh, you know, a god shaman. But not only that, I really like seeing young Gojo because young Gojo, one, he was co really cocky about his abilities. Um, you know, he was exploring more of his uh, abilities and stuff like that. The red, blue, because in one chapter, he actually used said red and nothing happened. He's like, oh, wow, my ability didn't work um, once again. And he makes the impossible possible, like um, Geto said, you know, with his abilities and things like that, where basically uh he has this constant ability that it just activates right where he you know you throw things at him to hurt him and they don't they don't even hit him they don't touch him like there's a invisible barrier there and it's it's on autopilot before he actually had to um control that you know to you know somebody throws something at him he actually had to focus on the object now just act the ability activates on its own and it's always active and then he explained that you know there's a process where it you know, it doesn't drain him because he does something else to counteract the drain, which I'm like, wow. Gojo is literally one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful shaman in Jujutsu Kaisen. And he was born with these eyes where they were like, you know, the last person that was born with these eyes and stuff like that, all these senses, all these abilities was like a hundred years ago. So that was a long time ago, a century ago. And Gojo is this powerful. Now the Gojo of the past you know, he made he made an error when he was fighting Megumi's dad, where Megumi's dad, no curse energy, but he, you know, he had, like, some curses and stuff with him. One, he ingested. One of them actually held items for him, and he stabbed, he literally slashed 
him, um, P slash Gojo. And I was like, damn, Gojo, obviously Gojo's not that, but how did he survive that? And then Gojo's like, oh yeah, at the moment of my deathbed, I did, did this reverse technique that, you know, my friend was telling me about, but they couldn't explain it well. They were just like, you do this and do this and do this. And then obviously who's going to understand that explanation? So Gojo literally escaped death. Like Gojo is on another tier and I really enjoyed that flashback, especially because it gave more character progression to Gojo and it gave character progression to Geto as well. Now Gojo now in present day is not as cocky as the Gojo in the past. Well, He's still cocky, but not as, you know, as cocky as he was before because he's more analytical. He uses strategy more. Gojo the past, yeah, he was like more green and stuff in terms of like his fighting um, abilities, his analytical fights and things like that. But I really enjoy the flow of this manga. Now, um, some people who have complaints with this manga, they say it's hard to follow. I will agree with that. Like some of the fights and things like that, it's hard to follow. There's a lot of characters and, you know, Maybe one of these days I just got to go to the wiki, the Jujutsu Kaisen wiki, and just read the name of all the characters. But it's so many characters in the series. Like, they, they come and go. Um, the good thing this manga does is actually give us the name of the characters when they come back after a while and stuff like that. And um, shows us their sorcery grade, which is cool, but it's, still, it's like a really big cast. And then there's on, uh, only some characters I really care about. And only a couple of characters and stuff like that in the series. But... You know, that's what happens when a series has a multitude of characters. But then on the other hand, you got to see it this way, that the multitude of characters is a good thing because the more character a series has, the more interesting the fights are going to be. And, you know, a each character has their own interesting curse powers and th things like that. Their uh, Kaizen abilities that they use. So th that's really awesome. Now, back to the Goju stuff. So Goju, he's just awesome. He does red, an ability called red, one that's blue, and then he does a hidden ability that's called purple that uh basically this is like a guarded secret ability that nobody really knows except for like those really deep in the i think Gojo's part of the standing clan if i'm not mistaken but he does purple and defeats this opponent i was like wow that 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 is really awesome and then later on we know you know his territory expansion and stuff like that now back to the ghetto stuff ghetto is such an interesting character because Wait, before that, let me rewind. Gojo, um, they were um taking out this cultist and stuff. And Gojo, you know, they went to where the cultist location was. And Gojo was like, hey, should we just kill them all? And I was like, wait, wait, this took a dark turn. And then Gato's like, no, they don't matter. Like the higher ups, they ran away already. But Gojo was like, should we take out these cultists? Obviously, their cultists, you know, they, they're they crazy, basically, right? They follow the, the, speed, uh, the heads and stuff. And Ghetto's like, no. Now, I don't think Ghetto said no at that moment because later on, he obviously will be the leader of these cultists and they will rebrand with a new organization. But I just think he said no because it's like, what's the point of killing them? There's no point. There's no reason. And that's one of the main things that Ghetto is about. If there's no reason to do something, then he's not going to do it. Even Gojo states this when, you know, he... When he basically faces Ghetto and he tells him, hey, why don't you kill your parents? Are you going to actually kill all the non-shamans? It's like, is there a reason for this? For all your killing? And then Ghetto's like, yep, there's a reason for it. Um, because the non-shamans, they create cursed energy. Uh, well, they I think they radiate or emit cursed energy and that create cursed spirits. And obviously there's a cycle that continues, a never-ending cycle. And then this cursed spirits will always be there. And then shamans always have to fight them. While opposed to that, the shamans don't really emit that um, curse, much cursed energy and cursed spirits don't get formed. Well, it's like the shaman dies and then he's like really mad or something. Then the vengeful spirit uh, actually gets born because of that. But other than that, that's what Ghetto's plan is. And uh, one of the sorcerers, I forgot her name, She uh, that she was like, what kind of girls you like? Um, and there's a guy, I think his name was Toto. Uh, that's the guy that always tells everybody, oh, what kind of girls do you like? Like all, all the boys and stuff like that, which is hilarious. I guess that's where he got that from. And Ghetto did not answer at all. So that was interesting. And Ghetto Jr. at the time, he was just like, Oh, I like girls that eat a lot, so that's really hilarious. And if you read the manga really intensely, intensively, can you tell me what happened to that dude? Because I do not remember, like, in present day, is he still alive or not? Because Ghetto was telling him, oh, you know, is this shaman thing good for you? Like, isn't it, 
isn't this dangerous and all that stuff, which obviously this is really dangerous work, but um, you know, he was just like, I don't really think about that deep, deep stuff. I, I just go along with the flow. So that was really interesting to see um, his junior and stuff like that, um, talking about that stuff. Now, Ghetto, that ideology, like Ghetto, even before that that woman shaman was telling him about all non-shamans, all this stuff, and how she was studying um, Megumi's dad. The thing is, uh, he was starting to have doubts, like, why am I really doing this? Why do I keep exercising cursed spirits? They will never end. Like, he started having doubts in why he was a shaman, why he was protecting others, and then his ideology changed, where he was just like, non-shamans are weaklings, like, they, they shouldn't even exist, basically. Like, he, he viewed, he started having a super, uh, super, uh, superior, superior complex about himself and shamans to you know non-shamans regular humans and stuff and he started like like he was basically as the his ideology changed where it's like it's it worth really saving these people like well what's the point at the end of the day so that's how you know ghetto was shaped right so now i really care a lot more about his character since he's a human on the cursed spirit side and at the end of the day, I'm wondering, like, you know, since we know all this about Ghetto, what if after, well, obviously his plan is not going to come into fruition because the shamans are not going to let it happen. But it hypothetically, hypothetically, if his plan that came into fruition, I do not think that after, imagine he eliminates all the humans, the regular non-shamans, he'll probably kill the cursed spirits as well because that was his whole, whole idea for um, actually having this plan in the first place. So... That was really interesting. Now, territorial expansion. Let's talk about that. The present day, you know, all that happened. Then we got the present day. Also, Goju couldn't fight his friend. And then he told uh, one of the higher-ups, you know why I, I couldn't. I, I I just let him go and stuff. Because they were best friends and stuff. And this really messed up. Geto even killed his parents talking about, oh, you know, I can't have no sympathy. Like, everybody that's weak in my eyes, everybody that's not in, a shaman has to die. I was like, wow, okay. And then he was like, that's not my only family. So Geto's over here on, like, a warpath. He's like, that's not my only family. Meaning that he's going to go out there and kill more people. I was like... Wow, that is insane. That is crazy to me. So Ghetto is like on another level of savagery. Now, um, present day, we got to see Mahito again. Mahito is actually a really cool character, you know, uh, always changing his limbs around, his soul. Like you need like a special ability to actually do damage to him and stuff. And I was like, okay, Mahito, let's say, let's see what you could do now and stuff. Mahito's still really powerful, uh, you know, his battles with Yuji and the other guy, I forgot the inspector's name, and then he's fi fighting uh, Mechamaru. So Mechamaru, they had a pact or something, and if he broke the pact and not healed him, then there would be a lot of repercussions that even Ghetto didn't not know about, because if you make a pact with uh, yourself, you know, there, you know, you kind of know the repercussions. If you make a pact with somebody else and that person breaks the pact, then yeah something crazy is going to happen so he has uh, a fight with mechamaru for before that happens mechamaru is the one that's bound and he controls puppets and things like that and basically he heals him and he looks really young and stuff and then he's like let's start this fight and then i felt so bad for mechamaru because he was like oh gojo i can't really communicate all right so the mahito versus mechamaru fight you know as they're fighting and stuff it's really cool because we also got a simple i think it was like simple ter territory and stuff like that which is really complex so basically when somebody does a territorial expansion no matter how strong you are you know you're going to take damage in the territorial expansion but mecha mecha is like nope simple territory a technique only passed down to certain people and really not seen a lot right so the simple territory is supposed to um, protect you in somebody else's territory and kind of deactivate the effects of um, that person's territory they activated. But Mahito is too strong and he kills Mechamaru, but Mechamaru tries to inject him with one because he only has like four simple uh, simple territories, right? And he tries to inject him directly, but uh, actually misses, misses the attack. And then at the end of the day, he dies. It's kind of sad. To see him die because he was just thinking about gojo oh i'm gonna go back to you guys i'm gonna help you guys i'm gonna go back like that was his whole mindset and in the end he actually perishes at the hand of mahito and ghetto was impressed with the you know simple territory he was like oh that is that is really interesting and he did promise not to interfere in the fight and he didn't interfere in their fight um on the one-on-one -on -one between mahito and my kamara which is really interesting now present day in the story we have the shibuya arc where basically 
Ghetto's there, uh, Mahito's there as well. There's a lot of curses there that follow Ghetto, and they're in like the Shibuya district um, in Japan, and they're in the train station. There's a bunch of people there that gather because I believe Ghetto did something. He puts like a something up that attracted like I guess non shamans there. Is really packed in the train station, like even more packed um, than the winter's day in you know Japan or whatever. So it's really packed and. The, uh, there, um, Gojo's there, and people are outside of it on the perimeter, basically, um, going to prevent the curses or anybody else from entering. And you know, there's a barrier up, right? So, Gojo is there, and the curse is like, Oh, you can't, you can't activate your territory expansion, you can't do any of this because if Gojo actually activates red, blue, or even purple, like the density of it, it's too powerful, and it will cause the non-shamans around him, like the regular humans, the civilians, to explode. So they're cocky, like, oh, what are you going to do? And then Gojo is just, like, telling one of them, this is the third time we met. Like, it, it's time, to, it's basically time to kill you. He kills one of them, right? Um, The volcano um, curse is like, ah, look here, I'm, I'm about to kill them. And Gojo doesn't care. Gojo goes right after the other curse and kills them all, like... Gojo is on his straight savage stuff. Now, I do have a question. Why does Gojo, I forgot, why does he wear the, the thing around his eyes, like those blinds and stuff? Is it because he's just so confident in his abilities where, you know, nothing can touch him? Or is it just for a certain reason? Obviously, sometimes in battle, he does take them off. Um, and his eyes allow him to actually detect cursed energy. So he can't, if he's really concentrating in battle and stuff, like he can't really be sneaked at attack or anything like that. So that is really interesting. Also, Mahito versus um yuji part two uh, seems to be coming in the series so i'm really excited for that then yuji is over here fighting a grasshopper and the grasshopper is like a high cursed um spirit created by mahito and it, the grasshopper's just like <laughs> i'm smart i'm smart are you smart and then yuji yuji's like oh you're a grasshopper and because uh the grasshopper is like <laughs> uh you know what i am and then he's like you're smart and then the grasshopper kept saying, I'm smart, I'm smart. And, and then Yu, Yuji was like, oh, smart people don't say they're smart all the time. And he, the grasshopper just covered his mouth. So four arms versus um, two arms because the grasshopper has four arms and then did a sneak attack and still lost to Yuji. Like they, Yuji, he's close to promote, um, being promoted to a first um, the first sor sorcerer or whatever. So he's really strong at this point in the series, um, which is really interesting. And so going back, and talking about the flashback uh, with, with Young Megumi and Gojo, it was really interesting because Young Megumi, he looked like he was in second, third grade. He was just like, yeah, I don't care about my dad. I haven't seen him in a while. I just care about um, this person here, all this stuff. Like, he was just like, he gave no, no he didn't care about his dad at all because his dad, he was not there at all. And even when his dad died, his Megumi's dad actually kind of, you know, he regretted like what he did because he got defeated by... Go, uh, Gojo got killed by Gojo and he was like oh okay I tried to distance myself away from everything and in the end he died alone which is true which and it's kind of sad so yeah the grasshopper fight versus Yuji that was really interesting you know what's even more interesting when my camera is out of space with the recording device is out of space so I gotta keep deleting files and this is gonna be like in different cuts because I definitely have a lot to talk all right so yeah back to what I was saying um, Jujutsu Kaisen is really good right now. I'm really enjoying the series. The gripes, obviously, I have with the series. Um, sometimes it's hard to follow up along in the fights and things like that. There's a lot of ex explanations of abilities and things in the series, which I'm not gonna lie to you. I have read a lot of series with a lot of explanation of abilities. But, um, in Jujutsu Kaisen, the abilities are really, um, uh, really interesting, um, in the sense that it's gonna be hard for me to remember what each ability does, uh, counteracts, does this, the activation, all that stuff. So um, that is really interesting. But overall, the series is really great. I really enjoy a lot of the characters. And I wanted to do a discussion of Kaizen before the year ends. And this is the discussion. And I'm really looking forward to what the Shibuya arc has to offer later on in the future.